Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how I designed this aircraft stand for my scale model aeroplanes using Fusion 360 and a 3D printer. A disclaimer, this is the first time I've ever used this software genuinely, so I may do some things that are not optimal, uh, there may be better ways to do quite a few of the things I've done, uh, but this is just me basically learning the processes in this program. I'm using the educational version of this, but you can get a trial version, a free trial version of Fusion 362, and that should have all the features that I've used. I'm designing this for my Creality Halo 1 3D printer, which is a resin printer, but there's no reason why you couldn't print this on an FDM printer too if you wanted to. In fact, to be honest, I think FDM might offer a bit more strength than a resin construction. Anyway, let's get on with the design. The first thing I wanted to design was that sort of arrow-shaped base. And in Fusion 360 we do that by drawing in 2D and then extruding parts. So I right-click on the bottom plane, select Create Sketch, and that will let me draw the top view of that arrow shape. I want to use a conic curve as a starting point. I put my first point of the curve over here, the other point 10 centimeters away, then drag the curve down until it's approximately 10 centimeters deep. Enter to confirm that shape, and then the same thing again a second curve 10 millimeters, 1 centimeter inside the first one, down here. Now, as you can see there, I left a much wider gap at the bottom of those curves between them. The reason for that will become obvious later. Then I used the straight line tool and I joined the top of the two curves there on the red axis, the X axis. And you can see that's given me that solid shape there, highlighted in blue. Now I can rotate my view, press Q to extrude, and then simply drag up that 2D shape to make it a 3D shape. And that's the shape of our base. So that's really powerful and also really quite easy. I want to make it look a little bit fancy though. So I need to select the top outer edge of this shape. It can be a bit fiddly to do that. Go to modify, go to chamfer, and I want maybe a five millimeter bevel there on the edge, as you can see. Click OK. And that just gives it a bit more of a sort of a, a sleek look. That's quite nice, I like that. So far, so good. Now I want to make a rectangular recess in the curve for the vertical part of the stand to go into. The process for that is the same as drawing the initial base. We draw it in 2D and then we extrude it into 3D. But this time we're drawing onto the shape rather than just drawing onto the plain white background. So to do that, I select the top face of the arrow shape. I right click on it and click Create Sketch. Again, that puts me into 2D top down view. Then I can select a rectangle and draw a rectangle where I want it on this shape. I made mine six by 10. I'm printing in resin. If you're using an FDM printer, I suggest you give it an extra half millimeter compared to the size of the arm, as you need a bit more space for tolerance. Once we're happy with that, we can rotate into 3D view again, just to make life a bit easier. Click on that new rectangle, press Q to extrude, but this time, instead of being a positive extrusion, like that's plus five millimeters going upwards, I put a negative extrusion, minus five, and it takes away from that base. Like so. Job done. And that's really all there is to it, guys, to make the base. A couple of simple 2D shapes, pushing and pulling, extruding, to make things work. Let's move on now to the arm. So a very similar process, we're going to draw it in 2D. So I'm going to right click, create sketch. This time I started with the straight line tool. I drew one horizontal line at the top. Three lines at the bottom because that would be the bit that slots into the base. I made those 10 millimeters across because that's the size of the slot in the base. 
With that done, the next job is to draw a nice curve between the top and the bottom. There's a few ways to do that in Fusion 360, but one of these simple splines is probably the easiest way to do it. One spline there, hit enter. A second one for the back side. And the great thing about these splines is you can adjust them to get the curve right. And as you can see here, I spend a bit of time just trying to get that to look decent. But once I was happy with that, you probably guessed it by now, rotate back into 3D view, select the shape we've created, press Q to extrude, and extrude it upwards. This time, because the width of that hole in the base is 6mm, I need to extrude it upwards by 6mm. What I wanted to do was have a slightly inset area on this arm, just to make it look a bit more attractive. So I select the top face of our shape, which will be the side of the arm later. Press O to offset. Select the edge of the overall shape. And now if I add a positive offset, it will increase the size. If I add a negative offset, it will go inside the shape, which is what I want. I'm not sure that one millimeter will print very well, so I'll give it a minus two millimeter offset. Then I select that new inset shape, press Q to extrude. If I give it a positive value, that will extend it outwards. So let's just say 10 millimeters, for example, so you can see that. I want a negative offset to inset it, so I'm gonna say minus one millimeter. I'm going to do this on both sides, and the whole thing is only six millimeters wide, so I didn't want to do a two millimeter inset there. But I think that looks quite good and adds a bit of interest to that arm. So this here is the top of our arm, which will go directly into the aircraft. We need some kind of pin there to hold it in place. Rather than put the pin directly on the top of the arm, I thought it might look nicer to have a slightly um, tapered effect. So I right clicked on the top of that um, arm there, created a sketch, drew a small rectangle, just like before. I press Q to extrude it. I made it extrude five millimeters. Then we need the pin itself to go into the aircraft and hold it. Now I made this in a slightly different way and there was a good reason for that which I'll show you in a moment. So instead of drawing on the face, I simply drew a cylinder, extruded it to the appropriate length. I thought five millimeters was a good amount to go into the aircraft. I rotated it and moved it into the correct position. To move things in Fusion 360, you need to select them, right click, go to move slash copy, and then you can move it on the appropriate axis. So here I am moving that pin to the center of that object. That will go now into the aircraft and it will hold it nicely on the stand. Now, why didn't I just draw that circle on the flat face and extrude it? because I also wanted the option to have the aircraft banking at a certain angle, which means that cylinder would need to go at a certain angle too. So by making the cylinder separate like this, I can right click on it, go to move slash copy, and I can rotate it a few degrees there. And just move it close to that block again to make sure it actually is part of that block. And there we go, that should give my aircraft a bit of a bank angle there, if I so desire. So I can print one of those arms with the cylinder vertical and one with a slight angle. And of course, I can always come back to this software and change the angle of that at a future date. 
Now guys, as I said, I did export this as an STL file. I um, sliced it from my printer and I printed a prototype copy. There was only one minor problem with that prototype and it was a pragmatic problem related to printing. And that is, I printed the base like this flat on the build plate. It came out fine. However, there's quite a large surface area here stuck to the build plate and it was really hard to get it off the build plate. I couldn't get anything under the corner to, uh, to leverage it off. It's not that it's sticky as such, but there's, there's quite a lot of suction there against the build plate. So in my version 2 stand, I simply wanted to make a couple of holes to give myself some leverage for removing it from the build plate. To do that, I made a cylinder of 5mm diameter, rotated it so it was horizontal, and made it much wider than the base itself. Then I moved it upwards so it was overlapping the base halfway, so 2.5 millimeters. Then I went to Modify, Combine, selected the base and the cylinder, and instead of combining them, I chose the second option there, which is Cut. Gave that an OK, and that has cut the cylinder away from the base and left those little holes there. And I'm hoping that will give me enough to get something under there and just slightly leverage that off the build plate without detracting from the appearance of the stand overall. And there we go guys, that's all there is to it. Export it as an STL, put it through your slicing software, and this is what it looks like when it comes out of the 3D printer. I gave mine a coat of Tamiya semi-gloss black straight from a rattle can and that's done a great job of giving some new life to my older models and clearing up some space on my shelves. And I'll even use it for my upcoming Lancaster project. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful and if you have a 3D printer maybe it's encouraged you to have a go at Fusion 360. I want to say thank you to all of you for watching, your support is much appreciated. Stay tuned for more videos in the near future, including the second part of my Mini Art Omnibus, the second part of my Trumpeter LCM3, and lots more. So until next time, thank you again for watching, and have fun modelling.